Proverbs chapter 8, a great chapter about wisdom. And I apologize that we will not get this whole chapter done tonight. We can't. We should. I mean, this is not one of them chapters we should divide, but we have to. Because I'm out to teach the Bible fully. And I'm going to cut it off at the paragraph mark of 21, try to. But this whole chapter has to be done once. And if I were to do it in one night, I would do misjustice. So Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1, the greatness of wisdom, does not wisdom cry? She's a street preacher, we learned in chapter 1. Does not wisdom cry, but most will not listen. Jesus said, broad is the way and many that go with the way of destruction. Understanding put forth her voice. Wisdom cries out, understanding has a voice. Many won't listen. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. Understanding in the Bible is your relationship to God. We tell them what to know about Jesus. How to apply what we tell them about Jesus if they won't listen. And then they're not going to get no understanding if they reject Jesus. She standeth in the top of high places. Well, for the Israelites, the high places and, and where Solomon will build temples of false gods. I did a study today with Jeremiah, the high places. Temples and steeples of the church and how they're wrong. And these are the same high places where Israel and Judah worship false gods and Baal. Where to go where the false gods are and proclaim the true God. We're not to keep it in the church house. And when you're a street preacher, that's one of the things they'll tell you. Oh, keep it in the church. Absolutely not. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. You're not to find the world in a church. Though the world invites, I mean the church invites the world. By the way, in the places of path. Proverbs 1, 20. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the street. She cries in the chief place of the concourse. In the openings of the gates. In the city she utters her words saying, And then you get, I'm a Christian. What are you doing? I'm preaching the gospel. That turns people away. The preaching? Yeah, I let my light shine. You never heard what Moses did? You never heard what Aaron did? You never heard what Jesus did? never heard what John the Baptist did. You never heard what Peter, James, and John did. You never heard what Paul did. Well, yeah, you're not a Bible reader. You're not a Bible studier. You're just offended that somebody's out there getting the gospel out and you're not. Unto you, O men. We don't go preaching to dogs or cats. And they're, oh, my dog's going to heaven. No, we don't. I know the Bible says go into all the world and pre preach the gospel to every creature, but we don't go preaching to animals. Animals can't get saved. I just lost a whole bunch of people. I, wisdom, call. And my voice is to the sons of man, not animals. You know, the problem is wisdom cries out, wisdom calls. But they're too busy on their cell phones. They're too busy on their smartphone to hear God. Oh, he's simple. Back to Proverbs 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? 
simple ones are just yeah okay they don't scorn they they just you got his religion I got mine always simple understand wisdom Always simple, understand wisdom. The simple can get wisdom. You're not too simple to understand wisdom. And ye fools, fools, back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22, how long you simple ones will live, love simplicity? And scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Go back to Proverbs 8, 5. O ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Over here, you know, it said, fools hate knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. But that's not the end. You cannot say, all right, where I'm going, there are a bunch of fools, so I'm not going to preach the gospel. <laughs> the Bible leads to us that there is still hope for the simple. There's still hope for the fool, even though he said, you know, I, I'm an atheist. And the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. I dealt one time with a man, and right, you know, listen, that's a devil standard weapon to fire back at, at a, uh, uh, a Christian who witnessed it. I'm, I'm an atheist. Don't take that answer. Try him out. And this man, I, 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 I can picture right where we were, and we're talking back and forth, and you know, I'm asking the question, and he's answering. And he didn't get saved, contrary to some church doctrine. He didn't get saved. You know what I told him at the end of that conversation? We had maybe an hour, half hour, hour, maybe hour and a half. And you know what I told him at the end of that conversation? I said, do you realize what you are? He said, no. I said, you're not an atheist. I'm not. I said, you're an agnostic. And he goes, well, what's an agnostic? I said, an atheist completely denies God. There is no God. I said, agnostics, I don't know if there's a God, but I don't know if there is a God. And Satan gives these people the standard thing as, you know, I let my light shine. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm an atheist. You got to question them. Oh, we fools be of an understanding heart. So because they're foolish doesn't mean, does not mean, okay, you're done, finish with them. You may be planting a seed. Somebody will come along, maybe and water that seed. Here. Shut up and hear. I will speak of excellent things, and we're talking about the eye. Solomon has personified, made wisdom to a woman, so she's speaking. You want to know excellency? You listen to God's wisdom. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Righteousness. My mouth shall speak truth. Listen, you're not going to get the truth from the media. You're not going to get the truth from a politician. You're not going to get the truth from a man. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let God be true. I mean, yea, let God be true of every man a liar. You're listening to me, and you know what? I'm, a, I'm capable of lying. I may lie and not know I lie. But if it comes out of the Bible, it comes out of God's mouth, it never is a lie. God cannot, will not, is unable, will not ever lie to us. 
and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. You are not going to find abomination words of God. You're not going to find lies of God. Well, you know, over here was a lie. That's what a man said that God recorded for us. All the words of my mouth, Genesis to Revelation, Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, are in righteousness. Even the words of the devil. The devil, yeah. I mean, it's to show us the tactics of the devil so we're not ignorant of his devices, the Bible says. There's nothing forward in that vile, wicked, dis dis disgusting. There's nothing forward or perverse, we know what perverse is, in them, the word. We're going to New Jerusalem one day, and there will be no forwardness, there will be no perverseness, there will be no unrighteousness, there will be no slander, no sin. This is a place of holiness and righteousness forever. They are all plain to him that understand it. And when you get somebody in a pulpit, anybody, any religion and he speaks over your head that's not the wisdom of God I mean there are men out there oh, the Hebrew and the Greek and they use these big long words that you'll never hear you'll never read you won't go home to a dictionary and yet, that man or woman is to be, look how educated I am. I am educated. I am smarter than you. That's why I'm up here and you're down there. That's the whole motif. What's more plain and simple? Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ suffered and died. According to Scripture, was buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture. There are some people go out there, well, you know, the, the mark of the beast and the image of the beast. And, you know, you're talking about things that have nothing to do with a lost man right now. Let's study the book of Revelation. Are they ready for the book of Revelation? Have you taught them the fundamentals of the Gospels of John? Have you taught them the fundamentals of the Pauline epistles written to the church age? Have you made it plain? They are, they, wisdom. They, the words, verse 8 are plain to him that understand it. And you may not understand it right now, but Lord Terry, as you stay in your Bible and you read your Bible, one day you will understand. And I advise you, get yourself a, 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 pen, a pencil. And when you're reading through your Bible and there's one passage of scripture, like, I don't know what that is. Or the devil has challenged me to uh, Take your pencil, put right next to that, that scripture, that passage, that word, put a question mark. Put the date. I've done that. I've got, listen, I've been saved since 1986. Now, there are some question marks that have not been answered yet. They may not ever be answered. But there are some question marks that, oh, okay, that's the answer. And with time and growth in Christ and in the Lord and growing up from a newborn babe in Christ as you get to the, to the age, then you come across your body. Oh, okay. What happened? Your understanding got plain with something you didn't know before. I mean, if you hand a baby a set of car keys, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to take those car keys and they're going to put it in their mouth. 
That's not what it's for. You got you to gotta get a little older to realize, oh, that goes in that hole right there. I don't know why it goes in that hole, but see, and see you, you got a little, I, I know where it goes, but I don't know what, what I mean. And you get a little older to realize you turn it, oh, this thing starts. And then you get more things that, you know, if I put that thing from, from P to D, I can move. But that takes a series of growing. It doesn't just get in the car, turn the key, and put it in D, and you'll smack yourself into a telephone pole. You gotta learn. I mean, you can't take a box of cake mix, throw it in the pan, and boom, where's the cake? And write to them that find knowledge. Notice it doesn't say wrong, it says right. Everything about God's wisdom is right. So you hear somebody from a pulpit. I'll give you the perfect illustration. If you are well versed in the King James Bible, and you, you turn the radio station, you're listening to a preacher. That moment he he's using, excuse <coughs> me, he uses a perverted Bible. That rings your ears. What was that? That does sound right. And he goes, more, that's not right. Why isn't it right? Because he's not using the wisdom of God. He's using a perverted Bible, the wisdom of the man and world and the devil. And when you get a doctor who said, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, repent of your sins and believe. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, you know, if you just want to go to heaven, you just say this prayer with me, and you're like, where's the sin? Where's the Bible? It don't sound right. And you, oh, you know, over here in America, we have the ark. Wait a minute. Where does it tell me? Where does Paul tell me? I'm not Paul only. But where does it tell me in the New Testament? I'm to build an ark. That, that, was, that was done. That was that was Noah. Why would I go spend my money on something that? No, the Bible says I'm to spend my money on mission. I'm supposed to support my church. I'm to help the poor. I'm to help fellow Christians. In the church. It doesn't say anywhere to go and, and see the ark. That defies faith. 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 That's faith. Well, uh, uh, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And as you get the wisdom of the Bible and God, everything else that's worldly and of the devil and of man, you're going to say, oh. And when your church starts doing things that are wrong, you're like, that's wrong. And your preacher will back up the wrongness of their... He's in the wrong. You're getting the wisdom of God. He's turned off the light. The right to them that find knowledge in the scripture. That don't fit the scripture. That's not what I've been reading. You go to the book of Jeremiah and looking at the world today. Whoa, we're in trouble. Because because I'm reading Jeremiah, and this is what's going on in the world right now. And, and let me get to the end. Of, wow, I got to the end of Jeremiah, and the, Judah was sacked. Receive my instruction. God's instruction. The Bible says, the study to show thyself approved unto God. You, with the study of the Bible, you realize anybody in that pulpit, any religion, whatever that mouth says, if it is wrong according to the scripture, you're going to have it plain revealed to you through the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wrong? Doesn't that sound? And you got to take the instruction of the Bible, the instructions of God, 
and to realize there will be men out there of religions that will be trying to get you instructed in the way of man, the, the, the devil, and the world. You got to rightly divide. The only way to rightly divide is to study the Word of God. This is wisdom. You can either have godly wisdom or you can have worldly wisdom. You can't mix with the Lord and Bilia. You're going to love the one or you're going to hate the other. Receive my instruction and not silver. Gold for knowledge rather than the choice gold. God's wisdom will get you money. Don't you sell out God's wisdom for money. Many have done it. Many have said, well, I not going to go to church because you know I gotta work on that night or that morning. I have turned down many jobs because nope, not working Sunday. Well you gotta work Sunday. Well, bye. You don't want the job? No, I don't. When you sell out to God's knowledge, wisdom and understanding for the world's silver and gold your wisdom has stopped. You'll get the worldly wisdom, you'll get the worldly knowledge, you'll get the worldly understanding, but you won't get it from God. You won't get rewards. If you sell out the instruction for silver, you sell out the knowledge for gold, don't think when you get to heaven you're going to get gold, silver, and precious stone. No, you got it here. Set your treasures in heaven, not on the earth. You traded everything for the world and not for Jesus. For wisdom is better than rubies. I'll tell you something else. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. You know what you're reading about when you read Proverbs 31, 10 to 31? You're reading about a woman that's in wisdom. Look at verse 30. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. We already read about beauty the other night. Beauty is not in the eyes of God. It's that price of rubies that she's far price of the rubies. Because she's got wisdom, and look at all the stuff she does. Lord willing, when we get to Proverbs 31. Again, we've been reading about a couple chapters about that strange woman. If a man, a Christian man, wants to get married, he better have wisdom in his marriage and get that woman who's far above the price of rubies, which is, what do we just read here? Wisdom is better than ruby. They say a diamond is a woman's best friend. If that's her best friend, you need to leave town. That with that woman, uh, that virtuous woman, her her diamonds are her best friend. We'll study that, Lord willing. She's content of what her husband makes. Silver, instruction, knowledge, gold, wisdom, ruby. And the judgment seat of Christ, gold, silver, precious stone. Now how do you think about that? What will be gold, silver, and precious stone? I know it's the work. The work for everything done for Jesus. Your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding to Jesus Christ and not selling out to the world. There it is. There's a judgment seat of Christ in Proverbs 8, verse 10 and 11. And when I tried to teach Proverbs at a church one time, in my own personal neighborhood Bible study, 
that I got permission from the pastor of that church to do it, and he attended, and he threw my Bible study completely out the window and, and accused me being Paul onlyism because I was going to take the book of Proverbs and line it up what, what Paul taught. Though the book of Proverbs is the Old Testament book, we have church doctrine in Proverbs. And I got to look at myself today. I was Paul onlyism. You know how much that guy was an idiot? If I was Paul onlyism, what was I doing in Proverbs? This is a guy who lost his church and everything. The guy who promised me evangelism, evangel uh, promised me to be instructor of his school, and he never got, never gave. I've got two witnesses, one in glory, and the other one I don't think is going to be in glory, but that's not it right now. You can find the church age doctrines in Proverbs. You can find the law in Proverbs. You can find before the law in Proverbs. You can find the Gospels in Proverbs. You can find the tribulation in Proverbs. You can find the millennial in the Proverbs. You can find the new heavens and new earth in Proverbs. Proverbs is one of them books, if you rightly divide, can be used for the church age. And there are things in Proverbs you can't use for the church age. If you sell out silver instead of instruction, if you sell out gold instead of knowledge, if you sell out for rubies better than wisdom, the Christian will not get gold, silver, and precious stone. You'll get wood, hay, or stubble. All the things that may be desired are not to be compared with. Whatever man's desire. There is nothing more than the desire of wisdom, understanding, of knowledge of God. Again, I mean, everybody knows I want to get a wife. I want a daughter from the Lord. I want, I don't deserve a virtuous woman. But I want a wife who's also going to help me serve the Lord that together we can earn rewards. I got my first wife, Lisa. She got, she got saved and got rewards by knowing me. Tracy was already saved and living from church to church in a miserable life. Didn't know anything about witnessing. Didn't know anything about the Bible. I grew in the Lord. She went home to glory. She has rewards and riches. Not of me, but the Bible. So with Proverbs 8, 10, and 11, receive not instruction. Receive my instruction and not silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. Wisdom is better than ruby. And if you sell out gold, silver, and precious stone, and to be desired, none compared, it'd be an awful, terrible thing. I can't even imagine what the thought would be when you're walking around New, New Jerusalem. And we sing to him. Wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny crown. And you feel for your head. I ain't got no crown. I sold out instruction. I gave, I, I gave up the knowledge. I didn't want to have anything to do with wisdom. I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. I can't wear a crown. Friend, that selling out is for all eternity. Yeah, you're saved. You're saved. You're going to heaven. Glory, hallelujah. Hold on. You're going to heaven and you're not going to have a friend. Some believe, and I don't know if it's so, that when the, when the elders cast their crowns, they think we're going to, and if we do, we don't. I don't know, but... If we do, what are you going to do when you don't? Listen, Jesus Christ is not going to give you a crown if you didn't earn it. It's not a high school football team. Well, this team completely lost every single game of the season. We're going to give them a medal. Just That's not heaven. That's not God. 
That's the world. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Prudence is right judgment. You need to read Pilgrim's Progress. I know what the house that he visited, I know one of the daughters is named Prudence. I think the other one's name is Charity. I've not been a while since I've read that. Wisdom and prudence deal they live together. It's right judgment. It's what you know, how to apply what you know rightly. Alright. I know how to use a lighter or a match. Prudence rightly. I can use a lighter or a match and go out and start the grill and we can have hamburgers. Nothing wrong with that. Or we can we can upset the seven day event. We can go outside and have hamburger hot dogs. To use no wisdom, well wisdom and not have prudence is to light that lighter, light that match, and use it to light a cigarette, a cigar, a pipe, or marijuana. That's not prudence. And find out knowledge, look, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Of witty, witty, you think that word was in the Bible, didn't you? Witty invention. Wit means intelligent. You know, there are inventions out there that are absolutely horrible. The guillotine is a horrible invention, not of Bible knowledge. The bombs that we've dropped on Hiroshima, whether right or wrong, they are, they are horrible. The study of nuclear weapons is a horrible invention, not of God's wisdom. Now, with the inventions of God's honor, wisdom, understanding, a Christian, a Christian developed penicillin. A Christian developed and did not patent the insulin for diabetics, which leaves it today, it can be cheap. A great Christian of the colored background took a peanut and a soybean and look at all the great inventions he come up with the peanut and soybean. Good inventions like the aspirin. Uh, and, and I don't know if the people who did these things were saved or not, but anesthesiologists. So when you're going to have surgery, you don't feel it. Morphine is good when it's used properly. Then again, you can use morphine wrongly and then be addicted to it. Somebody had a witty, witty thing. I'll put chapter and verses in the Bible. I believe God inspired it. I would hate to have to get up there and say, Congregation, open your Bibles to Proverbs. Page 156, third column, about three quarters of the way. One, two, three, four, four paragraphs. That'd be kind of hard really, to try to keep up with the preaching. Where we say, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. That's so much, that was a witty invention. The fear of the Lord is to hate that's against the world's teaching. The world is not for hate. What did the Bible just say? Look over here now, chapter 6, verse 16. There are six things does the Lord. 
the world says erase the hate. There are things for a Christian to hate. Ready? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Sin. You are to hate sin, your sin. Pride. I'm proud to be American. American made. That's a sin. That proud look. Look over here. Proverbs 6, 16. Six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination to him. Number one, a proud look. You cannot say Donald Trump is right with the Lord with that proudness and arrogancy that he has. That's all I'm going to say. You're to hate pride. Arrogancy. That's even worse than me. And you know, there are religions. It's it's called... How come I get these words in my mouth? As soon as they come to the tip of my mouth, they fly out the window. Nicolaitism. You say, what's Nicolaitism? It's in, it's in the book of Revelation. God hates it. I say we go find it, but don't have to die. It's in the book of Revelation. God says, I hate the Nicolaitan. What is Nicolaitan? We're the men of the cloth. You are just a peon sitting in the pew. You're to worship us. Call us titles. Don't you dare tell us. We're, I've had pastors in church. You didn't get my permission. Woo! Look who I am. Rich people have that. Ooh. And the evil way. Not only are you to hate the evil, you're to hate the evil way. Religion. The world. I hate their ways. The Catholic Church. I hate, I don't hate Catholics. I hate the ways of the Catholics. There's a big difference. And the forward, that's the most wicked, vile, crooked, perverse mouth. Do I, in case you didn't get the word the first time, hate. There are people, who, I, I know two people in my life, they did every other word is a cuss. And there are people with the most perverse crooked mouth that everything they say is a lie. Everything they say, they insult somebody. Everything they say is gossip about somebody. There is no good that comes out of their mouth. Counsel is mine. Getting advice is wisdom. And sound wisdom. I am understanding, says wisdom. I have strength, and you don't get it at a gym. Understanding is wisdom, and wisdom is understanding. The devil does not have understanding, but he has wisdom. And you want strength, wisdom, and understanding. By me, wisdom, king's reign, and princes decree justice. Don't even get me going about America, because we don't have kings, we don't have princes. King James had the wisdom to set off the King James Bible Committee. And he called for a council. Different men to, to, to do what they did for the King James Bible. Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria, Queen Victoria had the wisdom and understanding of God that she said, if Jesus Christ were to come right now, I will get off my throne and give it to Jesus. 
Would you even think, Sally, stop it, would you even think that Donald Trump would give room to Jesus Christ in the White House? You think Queen Elizabeth today, you think she give room to Jesus Christ? By me, princes rule. You don't mean they don't vote for him? No king and no prince is voted. You know, I just I was reading today about the high priest. And God set forth rules for the high priest. Who voted for the high priest? Nobody. Aaron. Who said Aaron's going to be the high priest? God did. Who's going to be the next high priest? Aaron's son. Who said that? God said it. Who is to be the next high priest? The son of Aaron's son. And then the son of that son. No one ever voted for David. No one voted for the high priest. Wisdom put him in. Are you saying Donald Trump is in the wisdom? Yes. God has a specific purpose for Donald Trump. And whoever the next president be, whether you like it or not, God set it up and God put it down. You forgot that, by the way. And nobles, that's people of authority. Even all the judges of the earth. We're not talking about Israel now. Did you get that? God will set up the Supreme Court justice, not the president, for the blessing or the destruction of America. And the Supreme Court judges that are there now are the destruction of America. I love, okay, there's love. Then that love me, says wisdom. And those that seek me early shall find me. You've got to go search and seek wisdom. I know you'll come knocking at your door, Proverbs 1, but you got to get going too. Riches and honor are with me, wisdom. But what about the silver and the gold? Wait for wisdom to give you riches and honor. Don't sell out. Wait. Durable riches. What's durable riches? That's the first time durable shows up in the Bible. Heavenly eternal rewards. The eternal riches of wisdom is that gold, silver, and precious stone you'll get at the judgment seat of Christ. The gold, silver, and precious stone of 10 and 11 that you sell out for, that burns up when the earth burns up. You don't take that with when you die. The durable riches you will take if the Lord tarries and you die. And righteousness. And that durable only other shows up Isaiah 23 18. My fruit. Notice how it's singular. And yet the fruit of the Spirit, nine fruit, are fruits, not fruits. Is better. Better is the word of Hebrews. Then gold. Yay! Fine gold. And my revenue, money, get. Then choice silver. Again, he's making that plea in verse 10 11. Don't sell out. And when you don't sell out for gold, silver, and revenue, wisdom will give you gold, silver, and revenue, which is more finer than what the world can give you. You give God your checkbook, and it'll be amazed what he can do when you do your, your balance. I, wisdom, lead the way of righteousness, not the way of evil. Verse 13. In the midst of the paths of judgment, there is judgment with wisdom. So when somebody comes up to you, to judge not least you be judged, you ain't got no wisdom. That I may cause those that love me wisdom. To inherit substance, gold, silver, precious stones, and maybe an inheritance in a millennium. How do you like that? And I will fill their treasures, Jesus said, 
set thy pleasure, set thy treasures in heaven, not on earth. You just read about the Christian earning rewards that the judgment seat of Christ and an inheritance. You also read about a Christian. I'm, I'm, I'm spiritualizing for the Christian. You also heard about a Christian, if he sells out, he gets nothing. Don't sell out. 